Hello everybody, this is Tim here again, here with my review for Leprechaun 3. <laughs> to get it in the frame there. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, but, fuck. Hold on a minute here. That one. Yeah, that's what I was trying to point at. Yes, this is the Leprechaun 3 pack. Okay, this film is directed by Brian Trenchard Smith, who also did Night of the Demons 2, which is a movie I, I enjoy. I, I like Night of the Demons 2. Uh, but just to jump into this one, it's this is my favorite film of this franchise. I think this is the best film of the Leprechaun series. Um, uh, just to go ahead and jump into it, I'd give this film two and a half stars out of a possible four. Basically, Las Vegas as a setting for a Leprechaun film is the, the best idea, I think, for this character because it's you know, such a greedy place and all money-obsessed and everything. That it fits great with a character like this who is obsessed with gold and all that shit. And one thing, it's just this film seems like it's trying to have fun with the idea of the Leprechaun, not play him so serious, have more fun with him and his magical abilities and stuff. Like in this film, any person who gets one of the Leprechaun's gold coins gets a wish off of it, and that's that's pretty pretty cool. Um, and it's a neat idea. But yeah, uh, as far as this film goes, I think it's the most inventive and most fun of the series. Just to jump straight into the film, the Leprechaun gets uh, like brought into this pawn shop. Um, by this guy who has like one leg and is like missing an eye, and he's got the tat he's got a tattoo on his hand that says "Lucky," which I thought was funny. And he brings in the pawn shop owner's like, "What is this horrible thing?" The leprechaun's like been turned into a statue, uh, and uh, the guy goes, "He's a good luck charm." <laughs> I thought that was funny. Um, of course, the leprechaun has a medallion around his neck in this film that makes him turn to stone. This medallion would later come back in Leprechaun in the Hood, but we'll get to that shit when we get there. But anyway. So, of course, he tells the pawn shop owner, don't touch the medallion, whatever you do. And so, as soon as the guy leaves, the pawn shop owner goes, Ooh, I can't wait to touch that fucking medallion. And, of course, he takes it off, and Lepa shit comes back and turns back to normal. And then you get a really neat little gore scene right here. The leprechaun jumps in the dude's back and fucking bites half his whole ear off. And you get to see him, like, rip half the dude's ear off. It's a pretty neat little effect. Um, and a good scene. And, of course, the leprechaun starts, like, beat the shit out of the dude and then the guy jerks out uh jerks out the medallion the leprechaun's scared shitless of this medallion in the movie um and uh <laughs> leprechaun's like you wanted me gold now you suffered the consequences now i'll take what's mine and be gone from here <laughs> and of course warwick davis's leprechaun once again is great uh he's having more fun in this movie than he did in the second one i like him better here in this one than i did him in the second one also because the story's better in this one than in the second one. You don't get that stupid shit like you had in the second one, where if you have one of the Leprechaun's gold coins, he can't even hurt you. You don't get that stupid shit here, thank God. Um, <laughs> but um, so Leprechaun Go takes his coins and heads like to the back of the pawn shop place, and one of his coins falls out as he's leaving, which is like, you know, <laughs> didn't see that one coming. He lost the coin. And so... the. The guy obviously finds the leprechaun's coin, the pawn shop owner does, and uh, he wants to somehow get, obviously get the rest of the leprechaun's gold, <laughs> even though he's missing uh, half an ear. Oh, and I forgot to mention the leprechaun bites off the dude's toe as well. Uh, one thing I like that they brought back when the leprechaun's attacking the pawn shop owner at the beginning of the movie, he mentions that he appreciates a good pair of shoes, talking about the guy's shoes. Uh, I like that little callback to the first movie. Of course, we know the little bastard... He loves shoes for some reason. I don't know why, but he just does. But anyway. Um, so one thing leads to another. You get little scenes. I like how they play up the Leprechaun's magic more than this one. Uh, or at least in more fun ways. Like the, the pawn shop owner goes back there to the back room and he's looking for the Leprechaun because he plans on just shooting him. Uh, thinking that's going to kill him. Obviously it won't. Um, and Leprechaun makes like a, a hallucination. Makes the guy like, I mean, like, makes an illusion, I mean, makes the guy see an illusion of the leprechaun at another, like, another spot. Uh, while he, like, makes this statue turn around and shoot, and shoot a bow into the guy's arm. And the leprechaun gets ready to kill the guy, and he, the dude, the dude takes the medallion and, like, sticks it in the leprechaun's mouth, and this, like, green leprechaun shit or something starts coming out of the dude's mouth. <laughs> oh, that was funny. That would, that just makes me laugh, just the, the scene just makes me laugh. But anyway, so the guy manages to get away, 
and this guy, he takes like a dumbass attack, thinks he can make a deal with the Leprechaun, trade him the shitty ass medallion for half of his thing of gold. <laughs> Leprechaun comes out there, the and he's like, "One, well, you got a deal, man. Why don't you just, you know, put that medallion away? We'll, we'll talk about it." And of course, the the dude being, I hated this. The guy's like dumber and shit. He puts the medallion. He actually puts it away. <laughs> And so, of course, after he puts the medallion away, Leprechaun kills him. He strangles him to death with a friggin' phone cord. <laughs> and uh, I like the line Warwick Davis delivers right after that, where he's like, oh, no, what was I thinking? With all this killing, I've lost me shilling. <laughs> oh, that was funny. Warwick Davis as Leprechaun is, is always entertaining. I, even the shittiest movies. I'm preparing for part four. I despise Leprechaun in space. I hate that movie. Gonna take all the willpower I have, I possibly can muster to make it through Leprechaun in Space. I'll just be honest. Even Leprechaun 2, which I don't think is as good as the first one, I can still, if I turn my brain off, I can still watch it and get enjoyment out of it. I mean, it's a low level B movie. It ain't, I mean, it's not, I don't hate the movie or nothing. But Leprechaun 4, I fucking hate Leprechaun in Space, man. I can't stand that. But anyway, back to this one, which is much better than the next one I'm gonna be reviewing. Um, so, Leprechaun kills the guy. Then you got this dude whose name is is Scott. He's like traveling through Las Vegas uh, on his way to college. Um, he meets up this girl called Tammy, and uh, he just he her car is broke down. He wants to give her a ride to work. Uh, she sneaks him into the casino. Uh, he gets in there. Of course, he has a big check with a bunch of money. He's gonna spend uh, for his tuition, but he blows it all. One thing I find funny is that the the owner of the casino is this guy named Mitch, and he like walks up to the kid. He's like, "Are you old enough to be here?" And he like grabs the guy's check out of his hand, and he sees it's like twenty three thousand dollars. And he's like, "Oh yeah, you're old enough." <laughs> that fucking cracked me up. Uh, but uh, so of course all the machines are rigged, the roulette table and everything's rigged. Uh, the the kid Scott he gets fucked over. He loses all his money. He goes to pawn his watch at the pawn place or pawn shop or whatever, just so he can, he can get money to go gamble again, because he's got gamble, gambling fucking fever. Uh, <laughs> so he goes there, he finds the dead dude, picks up one of the leprechaun's coins, sees it on the computer that anybody, you can get one wish for each coin you have. So I guess if you get all hundred of them, you get a hundred wishes. That's a pretty good fucking deal. I'd probably kill the leprechaun for that, but anyway. <laughs> um, so you get a, he makes a wish that he was back in the casino on the winning streak, and, of course, the Leprechaun comes up behind him, gets ready to whack the fuck out of him with an axe, of course, kill him. And he disappears and reappears in the casino, and the Leprechaun misses him with the axe. And, you know, it's kind of predictable that he would disappear right then and there, uh, right when the Leprechaun was getting ready to strike. But, you know, eh, I can kind of let that go. But anyway, so he's back at the casino. He's winning everything. You get to see, like, the magic uh, of the coin take effect and the little device that's hooked on the bottom of the roulette wheel that's making, like, everybody lose, like, falls off, and he wins everything. I mean, he fucking racks up. Um, and then he, like, goes up to the, the girl, Tammy. I think her, I think the actress's name is Lee Armstrong, I believe. It's the only film I've ever seen her in. She's fine here. I mean, well, she's not fine. I mean, she's not anything amazing, but She's, you know, she's decent. She's passable. She's much better acting-wise than the girl from Part 2. The girl from Part 2 was fucking horrible. Uh, and the kid that plays uh, Scott, he's not as interesting to me at first as the kid from the second one. Uh, but, uh, well, in the film, Scott gets attacked by the leprechaun, and the leprechaun, like, bites the fuck out of him. He stabs the leprechaun in the head, and the leprechaun's blood bleeds on the dude's wound, and he starts, like, transforming into a leprechaun himself, like a wire, like a wire leprechaun. Uh, when that happens, Scott becomes much more interesting to me, and I like how the actor's, like, talking Irish and rhyming and shit like the Leprechaun does. Uh, I found that more entertaining than what the dude in the second one did with, like, him trying to save his girlfriend or whatever. Um, but anyway, so he, like, comes up to Tammy in the, the casino, and he's like, Tammy, all this happened because of you. I want to share all my money with you. So basically he's saying that he wants to get laid. I mean, that's that's what I got from that. But anyway... So, I don't know what they're trying to do here. Like, he just has a automatic character change where now he's, like, crazy for money. He just wants to, like, fucking gamble till he's dead, I guess. Um, I guess they're trying to put that in there to show that he's getting to become more greedy. That way, when he starts turning into the leprechaun, you might think he might cross the line or something because he's starting to become kind of a greedy bastard. But I never really thought that at all. I mean, his kid, I don't know. He just doesn't really... 
that's the only scene where they kind of play up on that. It's kind of forgotten about. But whatever. I mean, that falls under the who gives a flying fuck category, I'll just be honest. But uh, one thing leads to another. There's this magician dude there who uh, fucking... I don't know this actor's name, but his character's name is like Fazio or something. And he's like a real shitty magician. He's like fucking horrible. But he just makes me laugh the way that the guy acts. Like, uh, he's a magician, and every time somebody tells him, like, like the guy who runs the casino, he's like, uh, he's like, Fazio, ain't you got work to do? Where he's a magician, he always, like, every time he leaves, he looks at people and goes, I'm gone. <laughs> I thought that shit was funny. Uh, but anyway, he decides, he teams up with, like, this girl named Loretta, who runs the roulette wheel. They're gonna, like, steal the, all Scott's money. And they go, and uh, Fazio goes in there. And he, uh, Scott walks in there, he's like, hey, what are you doing in my room? And he, like, throws clothes in his face and fucking, uh, fucking punches him right in the gut. And then he gets near the door and throws, like, a uh, magician-style smoke bomb. <laughs> and then he, like, runs off. I thought that was funny. Like I the humor in this film just seems more intelligent to me than the humor from the first or second film. I don't know, it just seems more fun. This film just has a way more fun vibe. With, along with the Leprechaun in this film and the Las Vegas setting. It's just more fun. Um, but anyway, of course, he didn't find, the, uh, Fazio didn't find Scott's money, but he didn't make off of the coin. Leprechaun shows up there. You get the scene where he bites him and his blood spills on Scott's wound and all that shit. And Scott throws the Leprechaun out the fucking window. And then you get a kind of a funny scene where he's on the phone. He's talking like hotel security. And he's like, I like to report a Leprechaun in your hotel. I'm sh- I'm just, he's like, yeah, a leprechaun, a little green guy. And I'm like trying to think of well, how security's reacting to that on the other end of the phone. I would love to hear the, that that phone conversation from the other end. I would just love that. And of course, security says, fuck off. <laughs> but anyway, so he decides to, well, leprechaun, you know, he goes from like one person to the next. Uh, the coin, like, well, Loretta gets the coin first, gets it from, Fazio, what a name, I know. And uh, she gets it from him, and then Mitch takes it from her. Uh, and then he makes a wish that basically he could, he could fuck the character of Tammy, basically. And what's funny and weird about this is that when he makes that wish, the, Tammy's character, like, she becomes like, I don't know what's wrong with her. She turns into like, she's like, stupid or something, like a cartoon character or something. But it makes me laugh, though, the way she acts. And she's like, Mitch, I want you. <laughs> I want you, Mitch. And then she's after he makes that wish about wanting to sleep with her, I guess. Um, and then they get into a, a fucking elevator, and uh, she keeps slapping the shit out of him and telling him that uh, it turns her on. But you can see, though, that she's just, like, barely hitting him in the face, though. But he, the, the actor's trying to make it look like it hurts like a motherfucker, which I thought was funny. Uh, but, um, and then he starts, like, I think I know what you want. And he starts, like, fucking hitting his own self against the wall. <laughs> I thought that was funny. Uh, and then they finally get in there. They're getting ready to sleep together. Loretta figures out you have to say, I wish, on the coin in order to get a wish. So she goes in there, steals Mitch's coin right when he gets ready to get to see some tits. And so you're tit denied. For anybody that's wanting to see tits in this movie, you're tit denied right here. So you get all that build up, no tits. Sorry, guys. But anyway. So she steals the coin. And then uh, when Tammy, like, fucking falls out of her trance. And so she knees Mitch in the nuts, I guess, thinking he roofied her or something. She gets the fuck out of there. Um, and then the leprechaun shows up and starts making, like, he, like, fucking makes a porn star or something like that appear on the screen. So if you really want to see titties, if you may, if you waited up till now, you get to see them here. So for all you <laughs> for all you guys out there that's waiting for that, you do get it here. But anyway, and so the porn star, like, comes out of the fucking TV screen and starts, like, getting ready to sleep with him. And I love how he's just like, I don't give a shit. How this happened, you know? I just want to get laid. <laughs> that, that makes me laugh. He's like getting ready to sleep with her, and all the whole time he's doing it, the leprechaun's like appearing on TV as like different uh, commercial characters. And he like pops up as a preacher, and he's like, "Praise the Lord and send in your money, <laughs> otherwise you're doomed to hell fire." And then he like pops up as a psychic. I mean, a fucking uh, psychic. And then he's like, uh, "The stars point to a tragedy about to happen." <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. Not once the fucking porn star transforms into a robot and uh, electrocutes the Mitch, the casino owner. Uh, the electrocution death, it's not anything to really write home about. I mean, it's okay, but you don't really, it's not like overly gory or nothing. It's not like anything amazing or anything. Um, 
And then, like, these two loan shark guys who come in there who were, like, fucking with Mitch earlier in the movie. Like I was trying to say, this film just has more of a fun spirit to it. Like, even the other characters besides the Leprechaun, some of them are just fun to watch or listen to or entertaining anyway. And uh, these two guys, one of them's like a loan shark. Another dude's like the guy he's got with him to, like, beat the shit out of Mitch if Mitch doesn't, if Mitch doesn't pay him back. And uh, <laughs> he, like, uh, the big the big dude who's with the loan shark, like, picks Mitch uh Picks Mitch up like he's getting ready to beat the shit out of him, and uh, <laughs> he uh, Mitch is like, "Okay, guys, we'll settle this later." And he lets him go, and he's walking off, and he's like, he looks at the loan chart and goes, "I could have taken him," and the guy, and the loan chart looks at the big dude and goes, "Oh no, 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 you, you bigger." <laughs> I thought that was funny, and you got another scene with the big dude who's with the loan chart is like at the the crap, uh, I mean at the fucking casino table or whatever. Uh, and the leprechaun's there, and he, like, smarts off to the leprechaun. The leprechaun takes him and puts, like, a, a coin in his mouth and starts and yanks his arm down and makes him into a human slot machine, and all these coins start coming out of his mouth. That was cool. That was enjoyable. I like that. Like I was saying, this film just feels more intelligent than part one and two. It feels like there's more effort put into the writing. Um, but anyway, back to where I was at. So, basically... If I can remember where I was at. Oh yeah, the two loan sh uh, two the loan shark and his fucking henchmen or whatever you want to call him. They go in there. They find Mitch's body dead. Of course, the leprechaun's in there. The leprechaun stabs the fuck out of the big dude's eye, rips his eyeball out. Decent little gore scene. If you've been waiting for some more like I don't know gory violence, not really gory, but more like you know slightly hardcore. I guess you could say violence in a leprechaun movie. Kind of get it here where he rips the dude's eyeball out. That's you know, got some little bit of intensity to it. Um, and then the other dude, he basically just like beats the fuck out of him with his pipe or whatever he's got with him. I don't know what the leprechaun's carrying. And then the guy looks at him and he's this. I thought I felt like this was just a little bit too over the top. The dude like looks at the leprechaun and he's like, "So tell me, what was Judy Garland really like?" And he's like fucking talking. He's obviously talking and making a reference to Wizard of Oz, as if the leprechaun was like a munchkin or something. I don't know. I just. That was a little bit too silly for me. And of course, the leprechaun knocks the fuck out of him after that. And then he goes after Loretta, who's made a wish on the coin to, I guess, look like a 20-year-old. <laughs> um, he goes there, and you get a really cool special effects scene here where it makes like her body like fucking swell up and everything. Um, this movie has the most entertaining effects out of out of all the films, in my opinion. He makes like her whole body swell up, her lips and everything all get bigger. She starts trying to make it to the door, but she can't fit. And he, like, Warwick Davis is like, feels like rain. He opens up an umbrella, and her whole fucking body, like, explodes. <laughs> oh, that was entertaining. Uh, that was fun. I'm not sure why she explodes, though. Does she explode because, like, her, I don't know. Does she explode because she can't fit to the door, or does the leprechaun make her explode? Either way, it's still fun to look at. <laughs> and he's like, uh, Warwick Davis is like, what a lovely lass. I had to blow up your ass. <laughs> Little shit like that. It's corny, but it's funny. Like when Warwick Davis says it, it is funny. Um, so he goes after. Well, Fazio stole the coin from Loretta, which I find weird because when she took the coin, when Loretta took the coin from Mitch, the character of Tammy like broke out of her trance. But when uh, Fuckio, whatever you want to call him, Fazio <laughs> takes the coin from uh, Loretta, she doesn't transform back into her regular self. She still stays as like the 20, 20 year old version of herself. So. I'm not sure how that shit works, but um, whatever on that. I mean, that once again, that kind of falls under the, you know, who really gives a shit category. I mean, this is a movie about a killer leprechaun in Las Vegas. <laughs> I mean, honestly. But anyway. So he kills Loretta, and then he decides to go after Scott and Tammy. Um, they're in the pawn place looking for clues about, you know, what the fuck's going on. One thing I like is when, like, how Scott's turned more into a leprechaun, and he, like, Loves potatoes, and he, he orders, like, nothing but fucking potatoes. <laughs> oh, that was funny. Um, and then they're in the pond place looking for stuff to figure out how to kill the leprechaun or what to do in this situation or whatever. And the leprechaun shows up there, and he's like, for pulling this trick, I'll chop off your dick. And that, that right there, man, that is fucking genius. I, that line makes me laugh so hard. It's unbelievable. But anyway, it sounds like I like this movie a lot. I did. Compared to 1 and 2... Uh, this film is much more enjoyable. The first film, it's an okay movie. It's not like the worst, you know, fucking thing I've ever seen in my life or nothing. I've seen way worse movies than Leprechaun. Uh, Leprechaun 2, uh, 
it's passable. I mean, honestly, to be honest, Leprechaun 2 would be almost as good as the first one if it wasn't for that stupid ass, you know, new rule they add into the movie where he can't kill anybody who happens to be packing around one of his coins. That's dumb as shit. But anyway, Leprechaun 3 is the most fun, and that's all I ask in a movie about a killer leprechaun, to be honest. But, uh, of course, they knock the fuck out of Leprechaun with a baseball, well, Tammy does. Um, Scott's, he's still transforming more and more into a leprechaun. They take him to the hospital. Um, one, this is kind of really, I thought some of this shit was kind of stupid here. Leprechaun's, like, trying to hitch a ride to, to come after him, and of course... Uh, nobody won't pick him up. He, like, gives one dude the finger. I thought that was just too fucking silly. And then you got another scene where a leprechaun shows up at the hospital. And he's dressed up in, like, a little uh, nurse uniform. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. But anyway. But you got the leprechaun kills, like, the morgue. The guy working in the morgue. And later on, you see his body. And he's been, like, stabbed all the fuck by uh, surgical equipment, I guess. That was kind of neat. Uh, that's one of the only tense moments in the movie. Um, you hear it on the intercom where it's like Tammy uh, Lawrence or whatever her last name is, I forget, come to the morgue, and she goes to the morgue, I guess, thinking Scott's dead. She gets there, uh, Leprechaun, like, pops up, fucking throws her down on this gurney and straps her down, he's getting ready to, like, hack off her nose, and then Scott shows up. You get some neat little scenes where he's, like, learning to use his magical powers and shit, and he, like, causes his buzzsaw to come alive and, like, cut these straps that's on him, where he's, like, being held down on this table by these doctors. And they're, like, trying to figure out what's wrong with him and shit. And they get, like, his EKG or something like that. And it says, like, fuck you on it. <laughs> I thought that was funny. But he shows up. He's going to he's gonna save her, of course. And uh, he uh, he tells uh, Warwick Davis or the Leprechaun, whichever you want to call him, that uh, Fazio's the one with his coin or whatever. And um, <laughs> I like this. Tammy, like, comes up to him. And she uh, she goes, you got what you want. Let us go. And he's like, no, my dear, you shall not pass. I'll raise my boot and kick your ass. I thought that was funny. And then she like jerks at the medallion, scares the fuck out of him. Uh, he takes off on the gurney. And then while he's like, while he's fucking like going down the hallway, he raises his hand up and flips him off on his way out. <laughs> oh, that was funny. Okay, this is my favorite, probably my favorite death in the film. Um, or. I don't know. The girl exploding was kind of cool. Uh, but this, I think this might, I always like watching a person get sawed in half. So basically he goes and kills Fazio on stage. Uh, Fazio's wish that he makes with the coin is kind of stupid. He like wishes to be the greatest magician in the world. And I'm like, why even bother with that? Why not wish to be like a fucking wizard or something where you can just do anything? But whatever. But uh, he makes Fazio like disappear and reappear inside this fucking, uh, trap where he's going to saw him in half and the leprechaun's like uh, hollering at everybody in the crowd saying uh, do you want me to saw this dude in half or, or do you want me to start up this saw and uh, cut him in half and he's like I can't hear you betrayers <laughs> I thought that was funny of course he saws Fozzie on half and this will crack me up to the end of the day uh, leprechaun gets out there and he starts like going like he's about, like he's a magician getting ready to unveil like a big secret or something and he opens up like the, the trap thing that he has Fozio in and he's like fucking cut him in half and his guts are like hanging there. That was entertaining. That was cool. Um, of course, Scott and Tammy show up. They want to fucking kill the leprechaun. Um, then you find out in the film you have to destroy the leprechaun's gold. The four leaf clover thing in part one was kind of cool. The wrought iron thing in part two was weak. The destroying the gold thing is the coolest way, I think, for killing the leprechaun. And the one that makes the most sense. But, um, so they want to destroy the leprechaun's gold. Um, this is one thing that's a really big missed opportunity in the film. The leprechaun's like starts, everybody starts running out of there. Because Scott's like, this dude's a maniac, get the hell out of here. And everybody starts getting the hell out of the casino. The leprechaun's like throws one dude or something like that. But they don't take full advantage of this. I would have loved it. This film would have been like the ending of Wishmaster, like the party scene. Where every, well, all this fucked up shit started happening and stuff started coming to life and everything. That would have been awesome, but they don't have the budget for it. So that really hurts the movie right there a lot. And then, um... Leprechaun's trying to, like, tempt Scott to join him, but he says, you know, I don't believe this shit. So he sets Leprechaun's gold on fire with a flamethrower, and that somehow destroys the gold just by setting it on fire with a flamethrower. I'm not sure how that destroys gold, but whatever. But anyway, so that causes the Leprechaun to burst into flames. Sorry, hold on a second, my fucking legs are killing me. 
But uh, anyway, so that causes the leprechaun to like burst uh, on fire because his gold was set on fire. He fucking bursts into flames and goes flying up through the air and everything and then falls down on the ground. His skeleton is like there now, which is it's a decent death. It's entertaining. Not as cool like effects wise as the as the first film where he's like evaporating and everything. But I think this one packs a pretty good little punch to it, though, where he's like, you know, just all at once burst into flames and everything. And his skeleton's like the only thing left. Um, I like it better than part two where he just, you know, explodes. But um, and after that, uh, Tammy like is on one side of Scott and then walks around to the other side. And then he, he, he's like, he's a leprechaun first. And then, uh, she walks around him and then he's, you know, normal now. So, kind of a weak effect shot. But anyway, so they get ready to leave. It ends really kind of similar, pretty much as the same as the second one. Where they've got the gold coin and they just throw it away over in the, uh, the fucking fountain. <laughs> because, uh, she's like, we can have anything we want. And Scott's like, I already have, uh, no, no, Scott's like, we can have anything we want, I think. Uh, yeah, he says it. He's like, we can have anything we want. And Tammy goes, I think I already have everything I want. So basically, I guess she just wants Scott. I guess he's hot stuff. But anyway, and so they leave, and that's Q into Moody. So as far as this film goes, I'll, it has more fun death scenes than part one and two, to me anyway. I love the girl exploding and the dude getting uh, sawed in half. Those are both really fun. Um... And just the Vegas setting is just more fun and the stuff like the Leprechaun does, like turning a dude into a human slot machine. And I completely forgot to mention that he actually runs into Elvis in this movie, which is really gen generic for him to run into Elvis in Vegas. But I still found it entertaining because uh, the guy's like, uh, the Leprechaun looks at uh, Elvis and he's like, fine suit of clothes. And uh, he's like, well, thank you, man. Thank you very much. And then uh, the Leprechaun like imitates his voice. No, no. And then he's like, uh, no, Elvis is like, uh, I love your shoes, man. The leper then the leprechaun imitates uh, Elvis's voice, and he's like, well, thank you. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> I like that. And then I like Elvis's response to that. He's like, uh, that's pretty good, man. Next time, make sure you get paid for it. <laughs> oh, that was funny. But yeah, all in all, this film's just more fun than part one and two. It's just more entertaining. If you have to watch any, if you can watch any movie out of this franchise, watch this one at least. This is the best film. I, this is a decent movie. For a B movie about a killer leprechaun, in Vegas, this is a decent film. Um, I'd give it two and a half stars. I enjoy the movie. I don't. I mean, it's not anything amazing, but it's decent and enjoyable, and fun for what it is. So I'll see you guys again with the fucking horrible Leprechaun's face. <laughs>